Hello, AP Cam. I, I do have the Chapter 14 homework all worked out. So um, I'm going to be posting this as a YouTube video and also as um, the slides. So expect sometime today, Sunday, the uh, I believe it's the 7th of February, that I will be getting this posted on YouTube. And also I'll post the slides if you don't want to go through the explanations and just want to see the work. Um, I think I put mostly the kind of work that we would need to see to be able to tell um, how to work these problems. Okay, as always, um, I would advise always working them yourself first, using this as a way of checking your work. Otherwise, you are not getting the maximum learning um, out of the process of, of uh, these homework problems. You have to work them yourself on the quizzes. You have to work them yourself on the AP test. So just watching me work something, you'll learn a little bit, but doing it yourself, of course, you'll learn a lot more. But I want to leave these out there as a backup for questions that you can't figure out and also for you to check your work. At the same time you're checking your work, you're also checking my work because I may have made a mistake on some of these. I did not go back through and double check my math on every one of them. So as we see with each chapter, um, there's always some little piddly thing that I did uh, move to decimal somewhere or, or didn't, uh, I left a problem out or something. Please let me know as quickly as possible and I will post those corrections and um, we'll, uh, we'll get through this next week uh, with a lab on Wednesday and a quiz on Friday over chapter 14. Be ready to move into chapter 15 the following week after a three day weekend. <laughs> All right, so let's start with um, the review questions. Uh, that was numbers 4, 5, 6, and 10. First question, um, I tried to remember to put the question out of the book in red and my answer in uh, black. How is acid strength related to the value of Ka? Well, since Ka shows the... Um, equilibrium for the ionization and the more ionized an acid is the higher its strength then a larger Ka meaning more extensive ionization will mean higher acid strength. So what is the difference between strong and weak acids? See table 14.1. Uh, this is a picture of table 14.1 out of the book. Uh, it says that the Ka value for a strong acid is large and the Ka is small for a weak acid. The position of the ionization equilibrium, I prefer the term ionization here, is far to the right for a strong acid, far to the, um, lies pretty far to the left for a weak acid. <laughs> the equilibrium concentration of H plus compared to how much uh, concentration your HA had originally. Generally, if uh, you have a strong acid, the molarity of the acid is the molarity of H+. Plus. But in a weak acid, the molarity of the H+, plus is much less than the molarity of the, strong, of the uh, weak acid. And the strength of the conjugate base. Um, in a strong acid, your conjugate base is a much weaker base than water, so you do not consider um, the conjugate base of a strong acid to be an influence on pH. In a weak acid though, the conjugate base is, strong, is a stronger base than water, so when you have that conjugate base, um, you can actually just have it by itself. Uh, say uh, acetic acid is a weak acid, sodium acetate, acetate is the conjugate base. If you just have acetate, expect it to be a base. Expect it to raise the pH of the water. It'll have a Kb value and it will raise the pH of water. Okay, next question. As the strength of an acid increases, what happens to the strength of the conjugate base? The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. We learn later in the chapter that um, there is a mathematical formula that the Ka of a weak acid times the Kb of the conjugate base equals 10 to the minus 14. In that kind of math relationship, if the Ka is bigger, the Kb must be smaller. So the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. And vice versa, the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. Uh, how, is a base, how is base strength related to the value of Kb? So bases 
have a KB value, which show their ionization in water. And uh, a larger KB means a higher base strength. So the more um, KB, the higher the base strength, meaning it lies to the right and makes more hydroxide. As the strength of a base increases, what happens to the strength of the conjugate acid? Um, similarly to the strength of an acid and its conjugate base, the stronger a base is, the weaker its conjugate acid. So when we have um, sodium hydroxide, a strong base, I do not worry about sodium ion having any effect on pH, just the hydroxide. When we have um, ammonia, then the uh, ammonium ion, the conjugate acid of ammonia, will have some acidic properties. Okay, so there's question number four. Here's question number five. It says, two strategies are followed when solving for the pH of an acid in water. What is the strategy for calculating the pH of a strong acid in water? So with a strong acid, and we memorized the seven strong acids in this chapter, with a strong acid, you assume 100% ionization, which means you find the molarity of H plus from the molarity of the strong acid directly. A one molar hydrochloric acid solution has one mole per liter of H plus. One molar nitric acid has one mole per liter H plus. Once I have the moles per liter of H plus, I simply take the negative log of it and I have the pH. <laughs> What major assumptions are made when solving strong acid problems? First, we assume 100% ionization. Um, so we assume that all of the acid has broken up into hydrogen ions and um, conjugate base uh, A minus ions. Also, we assume that the, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's the main one. The molarity of the monoprotic acid is molarity of the H plus ion. So I got ahead of myself. I was... We have two assumptions we use with um, weak acids. Uh, but only the only main assumption we make with strong acids is 100% ionization. All right. And uh, the best way to recognize strong acids is to memorize them. So list the six. I think we really should learn seven. Um, I think these are the seven strong acids. Um, and they are sulfuric, nitric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, and then chloric and perchloric. Chloric is sort of on the, bu on the bubble. Um, I think the Ka is about one for chloric acid, so it's maybe not as strong as most of the strong acids, but um, generally we say if the Ka is more than one, it lies to the right, so I guess you could throw in chloric as one of those strong acids as well. Most acids are, by contrast, um, are weak acids. When solving for the pH, should have capitalized the H on that, and I think I used uh, the word R a couple times in the first sentence. So, see, these are the little things that maybe aren't mistakes as far as the as the answers, but um, uh, you do have uh, uh, some little things I would have caught if I went back and uh, proofread a little bit better. When solving for the pH of a weak acid in water, you must have the Ka value. List two places in the text that provide Ka values for weak acids. These are tables that we can utilize when we're working weak acid problems. And they are table 4.2, page 554, and table 14.8, page 588, which focuses um, completely on oxy acids. What's the strategy for calculating pH of a weak acid in water? You're going to have to set up an ice table. You have to set up an ice table and solve for X, and X is going to be the molarity of H+. What assumptions are generally made? Well, first assumption is we assume that the pH is going to be based on the weak acid, but we, uh, we know the weak acid is not 100% ionized, so unlike the strong acid, we don't say the molarity of H+, is the molarity of the acid. Then in our calculations, we use ice tables, and in almost every case, we can apply the 5% rule and take the shortcut of dropping the minus x on the bottom of the uh, equilibrium expression. And that makes the math a little bit quicker. We don't have to do a quadratic formula. What is the 5% rule? When a concentration minus x is on the bottom of the equation or 
could be something like on the top of an equation as well. But anyway, you've got a concentration and it's like minus x or it's plus 2x or something like that. And um, we know that x is very small. We can drop that plus or minus x or plus 2x or minus 2x or whatever it is out of the equation to make the math easier. And as long as what we're dropping out isn't affecting the value it's added or subtracted to by more than 5%, we allow the assumption to be valid in that case. We, we say the assumption is valid. It's called the 5% rule. Uh, you should like the 5% rule because it gets you to the end goal um, mathematically more quickly. If the 5% rule fails, how do you calculate the pH of a weak acid in water? Uh, you're going to set up a quadratic equation or you're going to have to use a solver in your uh, calculator. Okay, question number six. Two strategies are followed when solving for pH of base in water. Oh, looks like I uh, looks like I uh, flipped my black and red here a little bit. <laughs> um, so there's another uh, another mistake I made, but it's not going to affect the uh, the answers. Um, but uh, I should have. I I've been and I think later on I switched back. The questions are red and the answers are black. Uh, well, for the first two here. Uh, looks like the questions are black and the answers are red. Okay, LOL. Um, two strategies are also followed when solving for the pH of a base in water. What is the strategy for calculating the pH of a strong base in water? In a strong base in water, we assume 100% dissociation in water. So we use the concentration of the base to be the concentration of the hydroxide. Then we take the negative log of the hydroxide to get the pOH then we subtract the pOH from 14 to get the pH. So you've got that extra step of subtracting pOH from 14 when you have a base. What are the strong bases we should memorize? Lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, alkali metal bases, cesium hydroxide, also alkali metal base, calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, but be aware that first they are double bases so that will double the hydroxide concentration. Second, they might have some solubility issues. They're not as soluble as the alkali metal bases. Why is calculating the pH of calcium hydroxide solutions a little more difficult than sodium hydroxide solutions? So you have to remember with calcium hydroxide, if the molarity of calcium hydroxide is 0.1, the hydroxide is 0.2. It's doubled. The, in sodium hydroxide, your hydroxide is the same as the molarity of the base. But for the calcium hydroxide, you have to double the concentration of the solution to find the concentration of hydroxide. So just keep in mind the stoichiometry and the mole ratios. Most bases are weak bases. The presence of what element in organic compounds typically um, signifies a base, and that would be the nitrogen atom. And what is present on nitrogen that allows it to accept a proton? It's the unshared pair. So the unshared pair on nitrogen allows it to single bond to a, a proton. Um, so ammonia can make ammonium. Or generally any organic compound containing nitrogen can also be a uh, can be basic. What strategy is used to solve for the pH of a weak base in water? Weak bases in water, got to use an ice table. Ice tables find the OH minus, OH minus finds you the pOH, pOH finds you the pH. What assumptions do we make? Um, well, we, uh, we, we assume that the base, the weak base, is going to be the one that's going to determine your pH. And we assume that the 5% rule is valid. If the 5% rule fails, how do we find the pH? Quadratic equation. Okay, number 10. On oxy acids like sulfuric and nitric and chloric and perchloric, where you've got some element, some oxygen surrounding that element, and then some hydrogens coming off of those oxygens, um, how does acid strength depend on the strength of the bond to the acidic hydrogen atom? Um, we call that acidic hydrogen atom the label, the labile proton. So the strength of the bond to the labile proton, if it's weaker, it's easier to pull the H plus off, then it's a stronger acid. How about the electronegativity of the element bonded to the oxygen atom? Like in sulfuric acid, that would be sulfur. In nitric acid, that would be nitrogen. The more electronegative that element, the more it's going to pull electrons away. Even though it's 
beyond the oxygen away, uh, the oxygen is in between it and the hydrogen, it's still going to influence that bond between oxygen and hydrogen and make it more polar. And as a result, a more electronegative element in an oxy acid, the stronger the acid. Likewise, the number of oxygen atoms, if you have uh, HClO, HClO2, HClO3, HClO4, the more oxygen atoms in an oxy acid, the stronger the acid because you're just adding more electronegativity when you add oxygens because oxygens like the second most electronegative element on the, on the uh, uh, periodic table. How does strength of conjugate base depend on these factors? Um, if your acid is stronger, your conjugate base will be weaker. So perchloric is a strong acid. Perchlorate is an extremely weak conjugate base and typically considered to be neutral. What type of solution forms when a non-metal oxide dissolves in water? A non-metal oxide is going to be acidic. An example would be an oxide such as sulfur trioxide, which makes sulfuric acid in water. What type of solution you get with a metal oxide, basic, such as magnesium oxide in water, making magnesium hydroxide a base. Okay, I think we have one active learning question. It said, um, thinking about the uh, equation HA plus water makes H3O plus plus A minus, if water is a better base than A minus, which way will the equilibrium lie? So if water is better at taking H away from um, HA than A minus is at taking um, H away from hydronium, then this equilibrium will lie to the right. If water is a better base than A minus, is HA a strong or weak acid? Um, that would be a strong um, acid, meaning it lies to the right. If water is a better base than A minus, is Ka greater or less than 1? It's greater than 1. Number 22, which of the following conditions indicate an acidic solution uh, at 25? pH 3.04, that's acidic, it's less than 7. H plus greater than 1 times semi 7, that's more than the H plus in water, so that's acidic. POH 4.51, that would mean the pH is 9.49, so that means basic. Caught my own mistake. Okay, get back to present mode. There we go. Basic, 4.51. POH 4.51 is basic. OH minus 3.21 times N minus 12 molar. That's a small amount of OH minus. That means the H plus is going to be something like 10 to the minus 2. So that is acidic. 36. Let's say we have 0.1 molar carbonic and 0.1 molar sulfuric. Um, don't do any calculations. Just remember that carbonic, both H's are weak with sulfuric. At least the first H and AP would claim the second H are strong, although we know that the second H is actually um, somewhat weak. Without doing any detailed calculations, choose the following statements that best describe the H+. Plus. H plus less than 0.1. I'd expect that out of the carbonic, H2CO3. Because it is weak, it will, even the, the first ion will not be fully ionized, so that's a good description of carbonic. H plus is 0.1. I don't expect either one of these. I expect the carbonic to be less than 0.1. I expect the sulfuric to be greater than 0.1. Because not only is the first H going to be fully ionized, you'll get some H plus also from the second H. H plus between 0.1 and 0.2, yeah, that's sulfuric acid. If the first H comes off completely, that's 0.1 molar. But we have the second H coming off somewhat a little less than, than fully, and so you're going to not be 0.2, but you are going to be more than 0.1. H plus 0.2, neither acid. Since both of them have at least one of the steps weak, you do not reach full ionization of either acid, so you don't get up to 0.2 molar. Number 44, looking at these illustrations, it's pretty clear to me that the illustration with the green um, ions here is a strong acid. H plus and A minus, none of them attached to each other. The one on the right is a weak acid. 
quite a few of the green and purples are attached. That means they are unionized in the water, but there is a couple that are ionized, H plus and A minus, and so that one's the weak acid. So which beaker illustrates what happens when the following acid is dissolved in water? HNO2 is weak, so that's the beaker on the right. HNO3 is strong, that's the beaker on the left. HCl is strong, that's the beaker on the left. HF is weak, that's the beaker on the right. So um, acetic acid, weak, beaker on the right. Exercise 52. At 40 Celsius, the value of Kw is 2.92 times 10 minus 14. I have seen AP uh, pull this out where they do something with the Kw at different than 25 Celsius. So be aware, it's been done before on the AP test. Calculate the H plus and OH minus in pure water. In pure water, H plus should equal OH minus. And so H plus times OH minus equals Kw 2.92 times 10 minus 14. H plus is going to equal OH minus, and they're both going to equal the square root of 2.92 times 10 minus 14. So they're going to be 1.71 times 10 minus 7 molar which means the pH of pure water will be the negative log of that, which is going to be 6.767. If your hydroxide is 0.1, what is your pH? Well, H plus is Kw over hydroxide, 2.92 times 10 minus 14 over 0.1, or 2.92 times 10 minus 13. With 0.1 molar hydroxide, your pH is going to be 12.535. 58. The solution is prepared by adding 50 milliliters of 0.050 molar HBr to 150 milliliters of 0.1 molar HI. Calculate the H plus and pH of this solution. Now, normally I'd look at this and say, okay, which acid is stronger? That's the one that's going to dominate the pH. In this case, they're both strong. So they both should be considered fully ionized. So the best approach here is, since you're mixing two solutions, Figure out the total amount of H plus and the total liters you're going to get once you mix it. So remember the relationship molarity times liters equals moles. So uh, one by one here I'm going to do the molarity times liters for each acid. 0.05 molar HBr, um, 0.0500 liters of HBr means it contains 0.0025 moles of H plus because it's fully ionized. 0.1 molar HI times 0.1500 liters is 0.015 moles of H+. Plus for a total moles of 0.0175 and a total liters, uh, 50 plus 150 is 200 milliliters, 0.2 liters. So now we have our moles of H+, plus from both acids is 0 0.0175. Looks like I left out my decimal down here on the bottom. 0.0175, we have our liters as 0.2, so we have a molarity of 0.088 molar and a pH of 1.06. Number 70, 0.56 grams of benzoic acid in water. Uh, it wants to know all of the ions, concentrations, and the pH. So this is a weak acid, they give us a Ka, 6.4 times 10 minus 5. Um, they also are making us solve for the molarity. So 0.56 grams times 1 mole over 122.12 grams, which is the molar mass I got when I added up C6H5CO2H, is 0 0.0046 moles. They said we had 1.0 liters, so that's 0 0.0046 molarity. So C6H5CO2H, uh, set up the nice table. It's a weak acid. Um, uh, do the Ka by plugging everything in. Drop the minus X, solve for X, 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, I would not have chosen this problem if I had realized uh, when I was glancing through the problems and picking problems out that this one does not satisfy the 5% rule. The assumption's not valid which means we're going to have to go back in and work out the algebra without dropping the minus x. So here's my attempt to remember high school algebra. X, I ended up with the equation when I uh, multiplied everything out and did all my distributing and everything. 
x squared plus 0 0.000064 minus 0 0.0000029 equals zero. Plugging that into negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, I got 5.1 times 10 to the minus 4. So that is x, and that is my h plus. I kind of checked my work by plugging it back in and solving for ka, and I did have the right ka value. Now, since the h plus is 5.1 times 10 minus 4, the OH minus will be 1 times 10 minus 14 divided by that. So the OH minus is 2 times 10 minus 11 molar. So there's one of my answers, OH minus. The pH is going to be the negative log of 5.1 times 10 minus 4, 3.29. Um, I should have bolded the x equals 5.1 times 10 minus 4 because that's my h plus. Plus, actually I do it down here below at the very end, I say h plus equals that. Not only is h plus 5.1 times 10 minus 4, so is the benzoate C6H5CO2 minus ions molarity, based on the uh, ice table. And the unionized benzoic acid C6H5CO2H is going to be 0 0.0046 minus x or 0 0.0041 molar. So I think I calculate everything they asked me to calculate in that problem. 78, um, 10 to the minus two molar solution of cyanic acid, 17% uh, dissociated, calculate Ka. So this is a kind of working backwards problem. Uh, still set up an ice table, uh, but now I realize that X is 17% of the original molarity. So the degree of dissociation X is 17% of 0.01. So X is 0 0.0017. Plug those in, 0.017 squared over 0 0.01 minus 0 0.0017. I got 3.5 times 10 minus 4 for the Ka value. Those are actually pretty easy. 82, typical sample of vinegar has a pH of 3. Um, and find the concentration. So this is kind of weird. Um, just I just uh, went straight to the equilibrium. Whatever the molarity is, it's going to be minus x for the HA, x and x for the H plus and A minus. But if we know the pH is 3, we know the H plus is 10 to the minus 3. So that means x equals 10 to the minus 3. So I have 1 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 times 10 to the minus 3, and then some unknown molarity minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3 for the molarity of HA. Uh, so I know the Ka is 1.8 uh, 1 times 10 minus 5. So 1 times 10 minus 3 squared over, I'll, I, I should have typed it out here, but y is my molarity minus 1 times 10 minus 3 number on bottom. I just called it y. I solved for y. I got 0 0.056. And... And that means 0 0.0056 equals question mark, question mark, uh, wrong, typed wrong, minus, question mark, minus 0 0.001, 1 times 10 minus 3. So that means the question mark must be 0 0.057 molar. So we had 0 0.057 molar acetic acid, um, and it, uh, dissociated uh, 0.001 and that works out to the proper Ka value. So fun with ice tables. Uh, calculate OH minus POH and pH for the following. Now keep in mind these are strong bases so we are assuming 100% dissociation. The first one not going to fool me it's a double base I got to double the molarity 0.004 becomes 0 0.008 molar OH minus, um, and that means the POH is the negative log of that, 3.10, and the pH is 14 minus the POH, which is 10.90. A solution containing 25 grams of KOH um, per liter. Got to change 25 grams to moles. I added up KOH, got 56.11 grams which equals 0.45 molar. That means my pOH is going to be the negative log of 0.45, which is 0.35. And the pH equals 14 minus that, which is 
If you hear some banging around, it's because I'm taking some banana bread out of the oven while continuing to talk about chemistry. A solution containing 150 grams of NaOH per liter. So NaOH is fully ionized. NaOH makes Na plus plus OH minus. And 150 grams moles. Uh, the grams per mole for NaOH is 40.0. Should have actually done one more decimal place on that. But um, it still comes out, I believe, the 40.00. Uh, banana bread's looking good. So, 150 grams is 3.75 moles per lead, and that's moles per liter. So the OH minus is 3.75 because NaOH is a single base. So your pOH is negative log of that point negative. Yes, negative pOH can pOHs can be negative point negative point five seven four, and the pH is fourteen minus negative point five seven four. 14.574. Yes, pHs can be above 14. Now we have a weak base problem. Trimethylamine is produced when plants and animals decompose. And it's one of the things that there smells. And what's your OH minus, your H plus, and your pH if you have 0.4 molar methylamine with a KB of 7.4 times 10 to the minus fifth. I stable 0 0.400 0, 0, minus x plus x plus x 0.4 minus x x and x. Set it equal to kb. Drop the minus x. X equals uh, 5.4 times 10 minus 3. It passes the 5% rule. So OH minus now. So watch these weak base problems. You get x. That's not the H plus. It's the OH minus. So your OH minus is 5.4 times 10 minus 3. Your H plus is KW divided by that. So your H plus is 1.9 times 10 minus 12. So your pH is 11.72. Getting down toward the end, number 108, arsenic acid triprotic. So now we get to analyze a triprotic acid, uh, Ka1, which is the ionization constant for the first ionization, Ka2 for the second ionization, and Ka3 for the third ionization. So we've got to actually calculate a whole bunch of things here. H+, plus, OH-, minus, the unionized triprotic arsenic acid, the single ionized form of it, the double ionized form of it, and the triple ionized form of it, ASO4, arsenate ion. And we know that our arsenic acid was made up to be a 0.2 molar solution. So 0.2, 0, and 0, minus x plus x plus x, 0.2 minus x, x and x. So we start with Ka1, which is what we wrote the ice table for. And it's 5.5 times 10 minus 3 equals x squared over 0.2 minus x. Again, I got caught with needing to do a quadratic. It didn't pass the 5% rule. So... Check my work on this. This is an example. This is probably where I'll make mistakes is on these quadratic equation ones. But um, I came up with x squared equals 0.005x minus 0.011. And plugged it into quadratic and got 0.031 for x. So now we know the H plus ion is 0 0.031. We also know that the double or the single ionized, the H2ASO4 minus, is also 0 0.031. Let me uh, quickly uh, bold that for you there so you can tell that that's an answer. All right, so we got the H plus, and then right below it, we got the um, uh, dihydrogen arsenate ion, 0 0.031 molar. The hydroxide is Kw divided by 0.031, so that's 3.2 times 10 minus 3. The unionized is 0 0.02 is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.031 from the equal from uh, up here, and that's 0.17 molar. So that's one, two, three, four of the things that they wanted us to find. Um, they did not ask for pH. 
which we could get by just taking the negative log of 0.031. Now, to get the other two things they want, which is the um, hydrogen, um, monohydrogen arsenate ion and the arsenate ion without any hydrogens on it, we have to work two more Ka problems. So we start with the ice table for the second ionization. 0.031 is our initial molarity, and that came from the previous uh, ionization of the first uh, hydrogen. H plus is also 0.031, and HSA, HASO4 to minus starts out as zero, so we got a minus x plus x plus x. So we solve for it in the Ka. We drop the plus x on top. We drop the minus x on bottom. We get x equal to 1.7 times 10 minus 7. So that's going to be the molarity of the um, HASO4 minus 2. Finding all kinds of little piddly things which don't affect my actual answer, but just little cleanups here. So then we go to our third ionization step to get the ASO4 minus 3. We start with the 1.7 times 10 minus 7 molar HASO4 minus 2 from the first step, or from the, the second step, H plus 0.031 from the first step, 0 for ASO4 minus 3, minus X plus X plus X, minus X minus X plus X, X. Oops. Solve for Ka. Uh, drop the plus x next to the 0.031, drop the minus x on bottom, and we just get x equal to 2.8 times semi 17. So I think that takes care of everything they asked for. Got the uh, negative 3 ion, got the negative 2 ion, got the negative 1 ion, got the unionized, got the OH minus, and we got the H plus. So everything they asked for in the problem, we were able to get. I believe this may be our last one. It's got three parts to it and actually has uh, three ice tables we have to do. We're finding the pH of some weak acid or weak bases, but we're doing them by assuming that they are conjugate acids or bases and solving for their K using the uh, relationship that Ka times Kb equals Kw. So 0.12 molar potassium nitrite. And you're looking at it and going, okay, potassium, not acidic or, ba or basic, but nitrite is the conjugate base of the weak acid nitric acid. And the Ka for nitric acid is 4 times 10 minus 4. So it's going to be an ice table because the conjugate <coughs> base of a weak acid is uh, basic. So on these, when they're bases, you got to add water on the left to get your OH minus on the right. So 0.12. Now, we don't need to do anything with the column for water, but we do need to show it as part of the um, equilibrium reaction. So typical ice table, but we need a K. We have the Ka for nitric acid. We need the Kb for nitrite, which is Kw over Ka or 1 times 10 minus 14 divided by 4 times 10 minus 4. 2.5 times 10 minus 11. And that now equals x squared over 0.12 minus x, or x squared over 0.12 if we drop the minus x. x equals 1.7 times 10 minus 6. And that definitely, definitely obeys the 5% rule. So OH minus 1.7 times 10 minus 6. So POH... 5.77, pH, 14 minus that, 8.23. So that's how you would work it if you have um, finding the pH of a conjugate base. Uh, just for kicks, we've got one more that's just like that one. NaOCl, the Na plus is not considered to be acidic or basic. And then OCl minus is considered to be basic because it is the conjugate base of the weak acid, HOCl, which has a Ka of 3.5 times m minus 8. Set up the ice table for 0.45 molar and solve for Kb by taking Kw over Ka and get 2.9 times 10 minus 7. 
plug in the equilibrium values from the ice table and you get x equal to 0 0.00036 obeys the 5% rule and the negative log of it is the POH so the POH is 3.44 so the pH is 10.56 and then last one 0.4 molar ammonium perchlorate. Now ClO4 minus is not a conjugate base. Well, like it technically is, but it is a conjugate base of a very strong acid, so it's not going to affect pH. It's going to be such a weak base that we're not going to care about it. So where's the where's the acid base behavior? It's in the NH4 plus. NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of ammonia, which has a Kb of 1.8 times 10 minus fifth. So here is the ice table for ammonium acting as an acid. NH4 plus makes H plus plus NH3. Work out the ice table on it. Solve for Ka from Kw over Kb. And that's true. You can find the Ka of a weak acid if you know the Kb of its conjugate base. And we get 5.6 times 10 minus 10 for Ka. Set it equal to x squared over 0.4. And you get 1.5 times 10 minus 5 moles per liter of H plus. This one is H plus, not OH minus. And so your pH is just 4.82. Okay, hope this helps. And uh, please ask questions in class. And uh, hopefully you're working these out on your own and finding my mistakes. Uh, don't worry about little piddly mistakes like uh, um, grammar errors or spelling errors. But if there's a mistake in one of the answers as far as um, um, answer to being incorrect, uh, please let me know so I can get it uh, uh, checked out and corrected for everybody. All right, there's uh, Chapter 14 homework.